Okay, so I'll just take you through my uh, my line of thought. So this app has been created independent of uh, so many things. Um, so the idea, the, the first challenge was to determine the well path and to make sure that we're getting it correctly. It got so bad at, at some point, it felt like a course because we weren't getting it right. And the biggest challenge was calculating the cost length when you're building and turning. Because if you if you are only building, then your cost length is very straightforward, right? Because that's a that's like a circle. So you're just going across. But when you're building and turning, then you're going from here and going the other way, or you know, and changing inclination, even at constant inclination, except 90 degrees. The TVD is changing and stuff like that. So all that I'll I'll walk you through some of the codes, show you the, the, the work that was done. Then the other thing that we did, I don't think other people bothered about that. Maybe I shouldn't have. We tried to automatically determine what the drill pipe design will look like and so many other things. So in order not to waste your time with the data that you gave to me. So the first thing that came to my mind was to check for the azimuth. So the assumption is that your initial um, easting and initial um, nothing is zero. And then to drill to this, um, these targets here. So I'm thinking this is the TVD easting and nothing. That's what uh, I'm doing. And so with this, um, with this, with this code here, I'm able to, so this is already incorporated into the app, but uh, the app right now requires you to put in the azimuth, so I had to calculate it. So for instance, for this point, um, for this point that was given, where you have uh, one, two, and seven, four, one, if you, if you try to check for the azimuth for that, let me run this. Uh, so if you run that, you get an azimuth of um, whatever it gives. So, you know, the azimuth is gotten from the bearing. So there's some mathematics there that helps me get the azimuth. So the azimuth is, uh, is 30 degrees according to this guy. And I calculated the azimuth for all the points, so it's all 30 degrees. Because I'm now working in a drilling optimization company, there's some other things that I would love to check, but I didn't bother to do that. So it's a one plane um, directional drilling, all of them, because the other, the first one is 29.99, so it's pretty much 30 degrees. So it's not east direction, right? So after doing that, I try to find the inclination between targets by calculating the displacement between all of them. When you calculate that displacement, then using this, uh, of course, the displacement from the from the um, the surface location position. So that's um, this, the I found the inclination between targets, and when you find this inclination, you're having um, 62 degrees between the first target and the second target. You have in uh, 78 degrees between the second target and the third target, and um, 59 degrees between you know the third one and the fourth target point, 17, 79, 59 degrees. So I did some um, division, and I was able to find that. We use uh, the first inclination because this is three inclinations, but there's the first one. So using that same average, uh, I found the first one to be 46 degrees. So this information is needed in this place. So all along I was doing geometry. Uh, please, can I know how many minutes I have so I'm not too relaxed? I rush if I need to rush because of time. So you can have. You can have the time that you need. Okay, okay, thank you. So 
initially I was I was doing this geometrical in order to get the curve and all of that and the straight line. But eventually I found out that um, the best way to do it is is to segment it so that a user can decide to put a no build, no turn. So no build, no turn means inclination and azimuth will be the same, right? And that occurs in your vertical session, in your slant session, and your horizontal session, right? When you're in a horizontal session, there's no turn, there's no um, change in inclination or change in azimuth. So that's a straight line. There's, there's no bending, right? So that is, so this no build, no turn usually is my first uh, segment because that's the vertical segment. And then in this case, if you notice how the inclination is going from 46 to 62, 78 to 59, you know that it's all a build and then there's a drop at the end. The azimuth is the same, so there's no, there's no azimuth change. So I usually would not specify the TVD here because I, because that's the kickoff point. I want the, the simulation to calculate that um, kickoff point. And so I build, I need about, um, so let me just keep typing. So zero to four, the start of the build is zero degrees and then um, the end of the build is uh, 46.9. Eight to six degrees. The azimuth, of course, the minute you step out of your vertical segment, then your azimuth, you have an azimuth automatically. So in this case, it's 30 degrees azimuth and it stays at 30 degrees azimuth, right? And then we build again. So to build again, I'm starting from where I stopped the last time. So of course, so many features should have been put in in terms of features like um, um, features like the start should be the end of the last one and things like that, but that's not in yet. So um, I'm building to 62.4983 and I'm keeping my azimuth constant. Constant. Now, based on the information given to us, usually I don't like to put the depths across because I want um, based on the dog leg severity, maximum dog leg I'm, I'm imputing, then I want my my plan part to calculate all the TVDs. But this was given in this case, and um, at this um, first build, the TVD is um, 1164.06. So at some point, I was trying to force it to always meet the northern and eastern target. But in terms of drilling, realistic drilling, I, 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 I just did it, made it a tool that would give you what, based on your input, this is what you will achieve, right? So, so the northern and easterns are based on what inclination and azimuth that I'm given. So let's try a maximum, and this is in meters because I'm choosing the metric system here. So let's try a dog leg of eight, for instance. Uh, Eight degree dog leg, and then um, so I wouldn't specify anything else. I will usually will specify length for uh, no build, no turn tangents, but the length of the first guy is usually what is left in the TVD after you get to the kickoff of this the initial build. So now I need another build. Um, so I'm going to be building from 62.49. A3 to 78, based on that calculation that was done, 78.0140. So that's the build, and then my, of course, my um, my azimuth remains the same. And then um, in this second build, my which is the second target, my target TVD is 1223.73. And in this case, it is um, 1327.21, right? And I want to use uh, I want to use a dog leg here of eight, maximum dog leg and maximum dog leg here of eight. All right, so um, I've gotten to 70, so I want to drop. So now another thing to note, in, according to this app that have been developed, 
So you could be clicking on a drop, but if you don't indicate it, there's a drop in the numbers you place. I will show you in a second. The code will assume that it's whatever you did, right? So this, for instance, is a drop from seven from seventy eight point zero one four zero all the way to uh, fifty nine point nine 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 three, which is the angle that I got, and then the azimuth is the same on that plane, which is thirty degrees. And then the final um, TVD is 1677.21, and then using a dog leg of eight degrees. So now speaking about challenges, just in case something goes wrong. So usually when I have a build and a turn where the, the azimuth changes, my answers are usually very correct. But when it's just one plane is funny, but um, let's hope it works today. <laughs> So before I click on the results, so you know there's nothing there. So this is the well plan, and I have indicated a step change of five for length and angle of five. So the step change length is for straight sections because you're you're increasing according to the length of the of the session. And then for angle is when you're building or turning. So when you're building this, you're increasing or decreasing angles, then that angle will change accordingly. So um, usually the well, I, I put a well plan, a TVD, a talk and drag, which when done will communicate with the uh, finite element method. So this is supposed to give the talk and drag for several friction factors, usually from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 friction factor in here and I can work the code with you. And then this is where I put in the robotics um, um, information. So if I click on load data, then that data is supposed to pop out here, right? So this is data today, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is data that was given to us today, right? So you can see that we are expecting it. And then the code will pick information from this data. I will show you that as well. And then if we were ready, we would have been able to show this and that. Well, this is not exactly how I wanted this to be, but this is something that gives you an idea. And then the total stiffness matrix. So for now, let's just run this well plan. And hopefully it gives the right results, which is looking like. So um, here you have your measured depth, your inclination, your azimuth. CVD nothing is in dog leg angle, arrow factor, dog leg severity, closure displacement, closure azimuth, and vertical session. And this pretty much is looking good. So, you know, if you notice, I didn't specify what length, what depth is this um, kickoff. So, what happens now is that um, usually I will just check. So, in the office that I'm working recently, what they do to test if I'm right is they have a, a 90 degree, uh, first of all, TVD, where you want the, that's the heel, you want the northern and eastern to be correct, to be exactly what the was specified. But the challenge now is that they also pay about $20,000 to get some kind of declination and some other number that this um, inclination and azimuth is corrected with. So that's why to be to tell you definitely that it's correct is a little bit tough, but it's correct. But when you use compass, what the results you're getting, that one is corrected with some geographical location thing. So this one assumes zero at, uh, at the surface all the time. So all that thing is not there, but the calculation. So how we the other way we get it is that they have a, an Excel spreadsheet uh, minimum coverture method. So I will just supply my um, measure depth inclination and azimuth and then they will confirm the rest of the results. Biggest, like I said, the biggest challenge was this cost length for build and turn. The build and turn cost length is basically the cumulative dog leg severity multiplied by that um, cost factor, which is 30 for meters and 100 for feet divided by the maximum dog leg severity and then you always get your call your cost length correctly. And this was done in order to get all these depths correctly. This was done. So before I before we roll in there, 
the way I pick this, and I'll show you in a second, is we, we do it from bottom up, which makes it a little bit more complex, so that I, I specify the end depth, calculate the kickoff, then specify, and then I will pick the numbers from here if they are specified. If they're not specified, I wouldn't I would calculate them. But usually the last one must be specified. So if you go around, so the things that I can tell you that will be always correct is the TVD. We will always get that TVD right. The northern and eastern is based on the other parameters that you're given. So we build to 46 degrees and we expected to get there at 1, 1 something, which is, you can see that it's somewhere around there because this is built in fives. So I'm not building the angles on one and two because there are some kind of errors I'm getting. So it has to be from five upwards. And then uh, we build, I think we build to, um, to 62 and we expect it to be at one, two, two, three, seven. So, and that is what is done here to 62, uh, one, two, two, three, seven. And then we build again to uh, 78. And it's supposed to be at 1327. So that will be around 1327. And then to um, 59 degrees at this degree. So you can see all the uh, changes in uh, the azimuth remains the same because that's how we specified it. And the dog leg is 888, but I think there's something that's causing it to get to 11 here and 7 here when we're switching from segments. We'll correct that, but usually it's correct. Seven eight 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 dog leg, and then there are other plots to look at. Um, the um, so this is pull up. This is a uh, pull up weight and um, slack off weight. Looking at all the different um, different friction factors, and then this is the torque of bottom. Right, so the reason why it's talk of bottom because I'm not supplying the torque on bit to it. So talk of bottom, and then you can see the dog leg severity at somewhere here. We it was zero, it's zero in the vertical section, and then it went to eight, and then that eleven that we got. Look at you know and all of that, and then this is the vertical section of this well, you know going all the way there. So these are the, the results now i'm not showing any of this but um, and it does it looks like it hasn't been done but a lot has been done so if you don't mind i'll just walk you through some of this uh, code so you see the the pain that has been put into this process is already about over 3000 lines of code it's 3000 lines of code but there's 5000 lines of code that's wasted basically so I just walk you through this, and, and um, so these are global variables and all the push buttons for the inclination um, build and all of that. This is the code that makes sure that it's always, no matter how many times I click on that on this, that it will always give the results expected. It will always open up a new. Um, so if I keep clicking that, it will keep on <laughs> producing. So and I can also, because of um, because of issues with uh, okay turn um, because of issues with <coughs> with um, time, I also added this clear segment so that I don't have to stress myself and start all over again all the time. All right, so that's that, and then. Uh, after doing that, we divide that um, that data from that table. First of all, um, if it's metric, it's steady. If it's imperial, 100. We divide the data into starters and, fin and enders, meaning that the segments, that the beginning of the segment is here, the end is here. And then I will just walk you through this part of it and then rush to the next thing I want to show you. So this is it. If the inclination is the same, and the azimuth is the same, then the segment is a no build, no turn tangent. And then I do all the magic, and that's very easy. That happens there. And then I, from there, my final answers have my inclination azimuth, and I store. So because I'm, I'm starting from the base, right, because you can see that I flipped the data, 
um, this is flipped. I flip the data upside down so that I can start from the base because it comes arranged like this and then flip it, right? And so I flip the data and then I get my inclination azimuth TVD, real kickoff, measure depth, and I do the same thing for butte. Let me just show you um, for drop only. Obviously, if inclination two is lower than inclination one, you're dropping, and then the azimuth remains the same. Then that's drop only. Then uh, if you go to the drop and turn, exactly. And all of them have very defined um, inf um, ways of knowing them. So drop and turn, the inclination two is lower than inclination one, but the azimuths are different, right? That means the drop. And then another tricky part in terms of populating that data is that if you have a drop from, if you have a turn from 350 degrees to 160 degrees, right? So you know that's funny. It's not, it, it, so it has to go backwards all the way to zero and then to 160. So all of that is considered in the code and that's what I'm doing in this place here. And then the differences are funny because you, when you're doing your change in azimuth from 360 to zero is not a zero degree. It's only a 360 change. So all that, I had to do all the calculations for that to make sure that that is, that is in the system as well. And then um, so, and that's how we do that. And then at the end of the day, I get my I get um, my actual measured depth. Then I have to flip all the measured depths that I got and then sum all of them and put zero at the top because it's usually starting with the first um, step and I don't want it to do that. So I get all of that and I have my plan part data set. Now um, that is not all, then this, goes into minimum curvature method, which is all this coding and it's a very stressful process. And um, this is the cost length calculation. I think I've passed it. Um, so I go through all that process and, and then, um, okay, so the cost length is for each I've explained that already, sorry. But the cost length calculation is for each, um, you can see it here, cost length, cumulative dog leg over dog leg severity and this factor. Then after that, after I get all every, I, I accumulate all of them. So I, I save this in some kind of um, app dot stuff and then accumulate them and put them in, dog, in the minimum curvature. And this is the code that works perfectly for that minimum curvature for our system. And then I have my plan part and I put that plan part on this table, U UI3, and this is it, final plan, see? And that's how I get that. And then the other plots come into place. And then I do my um, talk and drag for the plan part, and this is all the codes that go into the talk and drag for um, Slack and all of that. And so this is what we've done, and then we plot, and you can see me trying to put arrows on these things here, and then rotating off bottom, same thing. Then um, all these are all the other buttons that are there. And then so, you know, running the code in the actual MATLAB environment and running it in the app is quite different. So if it was just to do it in the, I didn't know that we were going to be able to do it in just the uh, environment and not just sh click on the app. So I was, my target for today was to try and get this thing to work on the app and run automatically. So everything, after some point, nothing was done on the MATLAB, everything was done on the app. So this is the talk and drag, and now I'm doing talk and drag function to, calc to output my hook load, surface talk, and void weight. And then I'm taking in inclination, azimuth, measure depth, um, mod weight, element width per foot, and downhole weight on bits. Oh, this the downhole weight on bit will be coming from the finite element method. This stock and drag is the same thing that you saw earlier, but just that it's going to be calculating something specifically. And so, it's, so I had to do it as a function because I cannot um, to put this in a loop and do it every time the pipe is moving in. It's crazy. It's madness. To be honest, I see I'm commenting out all the plots because I don't need the plots. I just need those values. But that's just a function, right? And then um, 
the finite element is this guy. So the finite element method comes with um, is either you're rotating or you're sliding and it's complete works on the so it's just to use it as a tool. That's the that's the craziness I'm going through. So the output and this is this really makes my life very easy when it works perfectly, right? Because like I said, I wanted to show you the total stiffness matrix, which is this. This is the, the labeling of the members. Surface RPM, downhole RPM, TVD added, not. So that whole idea you were asking the other team and they did a fantastic work. I'm really happy I listened to them, both the Ghanaian and the other one. Um, you were asking them that you're controlling only inclination. So that was on my mind because me, I'm thinking of I could be building and turning and all of that. So how do I, because the paper that I have only considers um, 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 build um, one plane and I sent an email to the man, Dr. Stoner, and he says I sh I'm on my own. So so with with the finite element, TVD added, which could be negative or positive, north added, east added are all considered. Downhold weight on bit, left force, right force, surface torque, downhold torque, motor RPM, so uh, that's why I was asking for a week from now so that I can clean this up and then because with all of this, this um, all this information that I'm asking, I'm saying I'm going to put here are very straightforward, right? The surface downhole information, they're very straightforward. I just have to take the the equate the answers to the data of that of the lamps and that right and those stuff. And then the input is the um, Inclination two, inclination one. Oh, excuse me. Inclination two, inclination one, which are the uh, so one is the the J at end and two is the K at end. So I learned my final element from an Indian man on YouTube. I took all his courses, 176 pages of handwritten notes, and wrote his code down. and And he's he is looking at uh, trusses like a. Uh, you know when you have uh, offshore um, beams, so the rig is on top of something that has a lot of legs, and those legs, uh, what he so he is going to calculate all these, the final element for that. But he starts with the basic thing from matrices and all the way, right? So I did that course up to the point where he now starts talking about ocean engineering, and then took that information to, um, to tweak to uh, talk and uh, to drill string and it works perfectly. It should work perfectly. So um, this is the first element. The, so for each element, this is inclination one here, and then this is inclination two. And I'm trying to target that the length of the drill string, 10 meters, 30 feet is, um, is this is I1 and this is I2 and azimuth one, azimuth two as well. So that is what we're doing there. And then of course you also need your length the length measure depth basically between here and here. So if I wanted to do this, what I will have done is my step change. I will have increased it to 10 if I'm doing a metric system and it's 30 in the other system in the uh, imperial system and then the young mode loss for all. I also discovered that the beat is also uh, still and so everything is 30 times 10 raised to the power 6. Um, 30 times 10 raised to the power 6 PSI and then convert it to Newton something and then this is um, shear modulus IDs and ODs which you see the stress to get that and the motor here and beat which you gave CCS you gave that you know and then um, Boyd um, the Boyd weight comes from the torque and drag function and so then this is the coding that goes into that um, yeah you want to say something yeah I think you're up Excuse me, I think your app is really good. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to learn from you is what modules do you have in your package that's actually going to, I guess it's going to be in, in the, the lab view, the MATLAB view, MATLAB or lab view portion of your model. What parts of those do you see that you want to use first? There's, there's you, you've, got, you've got very great aspirations of making this a very thorough model, but we don't have enough time in one year to do that. Nobody does. <clears throat> Even in the commercial world, 
nobody's been able to do all of this in one year. So what do you think, where do you start for a directional drilling problem? And then what do you say, this is this is my roadmap for future years? Okay, so um, this is, well, I'll just scroll through. The, the thing is this, I need to get, because the drill ahead model, if you give me a pre-BHA report, I can use the drill ahead model to tell you what your BHA will perform like in terms of the torque and drag and, uh, and buckling. So I need to synchronize my torque and drag and my finite element analysis. That's the next, the big next step. Would you, do, would you do the drill ahead model first or would you just use like what some of the other teams did is initially just figure out this is where we think it's going to going to be based on this calculation and then and see if that's valid and then add on the predictive aspect of it well you, you've seen the i mean this is the plan the plan part for what you gave us today is this guy and i haven't added the table that shows you the formation information you gave us how we use it because it's already in the code so this is where it's supposed to drill so this is the direction that it should go right Right. So, yeah, so what I want to now do with the finite element is that when we take each step, from, <clears throat> I will compare this nothing and Easton and TVD to the, to the, so if I'm taking, if I'm going from two to three, then I will compare the results of um, the added nothing Easton and TVD from the finite element method when you add it to this positions here and see if it's the same with these guys here. If it's not the same, then I've deviated. Right? And then I I, I, I slide, I, I make this a target and try to slide to this um, position. You, you had a question earlier that really was a warning that if you do too much in the finite element analysis, you're going to slow down the calcul calculations considerably. So the, the more detail you get, if you use only finite element, you're eventually going to be time bound. So Dimitri, you still here? You want to add anything to that? He's hiding. No, sorry. Um, uh, I mean, it depends on what, what, what's to be modeled with finite elements. It's just uh, uh, for <laughs> well, hard to answer. Yes, finite elements could be slow, but uh, for for the purpose of the directional drilling, I do not think that will be needed. I mean, finite elements to estimate some outputs might be, but for the right. Uh, just staying on trajectory, I don't think it's required. One of the things we'll do in the future is try to get you a better list of references. And you can see what some people have already published that, that might be helpful in this area. It, it's, it's easier for, for you to build off of some other people. Alex, what's your question? Hey Fred, I think the work done here is really, really good. And the fact that he went through and learned how to do <laughs> MBA yeah. on himself is very commendable. Like I'm I personally is not dis disciplined enough to even do do that. But one one, one thing I would have to say is uh, the work that he done, it can be built on just a suggestion for the uh, UOC team is uh one one of thing that I, I I myself is trying to do is to somehow figure out a way to understand the bending and the how should I use the right word uh, distortion in the BHA and how that affects DLS and then how that's going to affect your directional steering. So if you already done some sort of FEA work and I remember in your presentation you mentioned that there's six degree of freedom for each of the tubulars that are 200 tubulars and your model is supposed to be able to calculate all that. If you're able to, how to say, extend that and 
see at least the near BHA, how that can affect your DLS, I think your model is going to be very, very unique. Just a thought. Yeah, so um, just quickly, some other things that I really want you to see before we go is um, the fact that we did the drill color thing. And this 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 takes in one of the um, API uh, drill color charts. And then based on the whole size that you're giving to us, whole size here, I'm able to get the drill color information and even give take a random width, width per foot and get the matching drill color OD and ID. Just for you to, just for, for thought. Also for the motto, we have the motto size, lobes, minimum, maximum flow, all of this. So the, the, the concept is to, at the end of the, while you're drilling, have that chart that has the power and the maximum torque, RPM, all of that of the motor going on. And you see that you're not exceeding the maximum um, torque and uh, maximum stuff for the for each uh, motor that or the motor that's being used. And this is based on size as well, because it has a size. So all this was typed in. So just wanted you to have that information, that knowledge in mind. So that so at the end of the day, what we wanted to do is as soon as you click run, it will show you the arrangement of the drill pipe and drill collar and all that sizes and mod model. Also, we did drill pipe selection and as you can see here. The, this is from Tricon um, handbook and there are some things that can be coded. So they were typed. Uh, you can see all this typed in here. So this is also to select the grade and the um, drill pipe uh, OD weight per foot. And obviously, based on some tensile information and minimum yield, we might need two different types of pipe. And so that, that selection process is also done in here. And you can see that here you have one and then here you have two. So I didn't do for, we didn't do for um, more than two. And so that's that. And so, so he, here is taking in all that uh, inclination um, work rates that you gave us. Um, this is how we use it, right? We this is how we use the work rates and the build up um, magnitude noise and all of that. All this code is to take that in work new work rate and the CCS that was given to us to make sure that in the in the depth that was specified, all the inclination and azimuth comes with the same CCS, right? And that's all that we're doing there. And so what's left now is to implement the finite element analysis and this is what that's uh this is where we stopped and earlier this morning and this is not a one-man show or five-man show because the math lab has a, a community where you can if you if you have a problem in your code you can remove the essential information and put that information there and then people can gather around and see if they can answer you so this morning, the challenge, like I was explaining earlier, is having you, you, you've arranged the BHA like this and then you have the inclination all the way. But now the BHA comes in from the top with the initial inclination and some nice guy was able to um, answer that question here. So you can see um, the way we get help for when we get stuck, right? And this code works. So this was something that the whole night and yesterday was the problem, but some Alan Stevens was able to help us with that. So the vision now is um, by the time we get to next year, I'm still I'm finishing my PhD by the grace of God next year. So we can still participate. We will uh, we will have at least completed this to drill to target and do all that comparison. And then, and then we can um, take in the new tasks that's given and achieve the goals that are given then. So thank you so much. And I must confess, this has been a huge learning um, for, uh, for me and the team, especially for me who, because drilling is the focus of my research, drilling vibration. So you can imagine that that has taken me to another level from November last year till now. So thank you so much. You and your team, you're most welcome for that. Yes. So are we supposed to produce this? Uh, are we still supposed to produce this output today? No, no, you already have. You got you got this. OK, uh, I will probably ask for some follow up from, from everyone. Uh, I, 
earlier I asked for some photos. Uh, I would like some screenshots of what you think is very relevant. We'd like to get some something in a magazine to let people know what you're working on and who's working on it. So uh, we'll get you some publicity. And that's for all three teams. Thank um, you, sir. I, th I think uh, one, of, one of the things that I think we're going to focus on in the, in the future is uh, we, we want to look at your flow charts and how the different pieces are tied together and where they're not yet tied together. It's okay. You know, if, if you have a flow chart that says, this is our vision, here's the roadmap. This is all that we can achieve in the first three months or the first nine months of the project. Any of, any of those type of things. And yeah, we, yeah. We can, can put that in the guidelines that will help, help everybody a little bit. And it, I think all of us on, on Paul and Roman's group where they're doing open source models, uh, what we've seen today, what I've noticed from others is uh, there's, there's, probably ways that we can all communicate. Each company can communicate with other companies about what they're doing. Uh, you are creating a comprehensive model all by yourself. So are many of the other service companies and oil companies, but there will be other people that will just create an app and it will only do one thing. And so the data will have to be interchangeable and the output from that module becomes the input to somebody else's module. And so I think we've got to find a way of, of, of communicating easily how that happens. It may be visual, it may be some other way to show how all these pieces indeed will fit together. And, and I know the industry is working on that. I, I encourage you to join us, all, all three teams, I encourage you to join some of these committees because you're doing the work and you're doing the research and, and you can help us and we can help you. Plus you make some good contacts. So uh, are there any more questions from judges? Any closing comments that judges want to make? Our team members or our professors? Okay. Listen, it's been months of work for you and a long day for us. And uh, I really appreciate the effort that everyone's made today. Uh, to the judges, we'll be in touch and we'll pick a winner shortly. Thank you.